everyone, it's 15th of April. I've come down to uh, plant my potatoes out and I'll put these peas in as well. Plus have a, you know, another look at everything. Cause I, I popped down the other day just to see if everything was okay or still alive from when I planted everything out, whenever it was last week or week before. Um, it's had a bit of a frost nip. Um, my own fault really, you know, putting them out early, but uh, they should come round from it. It'll probably check them a little bit. You'll have probably a little smaller yield because um, they are quite a small plant and they've got a lot of growing to do in very little time. So I'll give them a good watering. Cause obviously there were quite a lot of roots in the pot and you know, you put them in, we've not had any rain. So that uh, pot will only last them so long and they've not had a chance to get roots out to get some water. So they're a little on the dry side, I think they've, they've suffered a little bit, but uh, I've given them a, a good watering. I've actually put a little bit of Epsom salts in as well and a bit of nitrogen feed. To, to green one because once things have got frost nipped the thing is called chlorosis you can get it through other ways but cold is a way where at least kind of go whitey yellowy sort of color as long as the main middle bit is okay not so bad garlic's pretty old you know fine it's it's a bit uh yellowy in places but that'll recover i mean these will probably recover you know i've not lost anything that's been lopped off at the stem thank god so hopefully they'll they'll come round you know because we do some rain a few days with a bit of luck and um, once they've got some new roots out the cold weather's supposed to stop uh, well last night was supposed to have been a, the last cold night for, for what I can see in the weather forecast so um, they should get a bit of chance to get a bit of growth on now hopefully so I'm not going to show you planted all my spuds because it's you know I, I dug it over the other week uh, just a couple of trenches so I'm just using like um, like an angle arrowed head sort of hoe and just scooping a channel out blood fish and bone down in it and then whacking my spuds in and then just i'll hill them up to a degree because um, you've got to keep the tops protected here until probably for about another five weeks because that's kind of like last for last frost date when you're getting into sort of mid-may um well i thought uh, get them in because it's not wet it's, it's, the ground is nice and dry um if strawberries have had a bit of a frost nip as well but um it is what it is you know but um that's it really so i'll get a camera and have a quick look round, and then uh, i'll get on with doing a few jobs so these are just some of the sea potatoes i've brought over i've got the uh, duke of yorks the jazzies charlotte's and maris piers the um south palmeiras and some orla are left in the van because i've planted 16 orla in the little polypots in the back garden so i've got i've got 12 left so the idea is is uh, these last two rows going sort of like down here um i'll put an even row of um the sarpal mirrors depending on how many i've got i've got um 26 i think and then at the end i'll just finish it off with some oiler and then uh, any other spuds I've, I've got left over i might do some more pots at home somewhere so uh like i say all i've used is something just to notch it out it's about sort of six inches deep Probably not even that, to be honest, but uh, I thought I can't bother digging it out, you know, another trench again. It's not quite crumbly enough to just sort of, you know, trowel in, which I'd, I prefer to do, but um, it is what it is. Bit of blood fish and bone, scattered a bit of Epsom salts down there. I do like Epsom salts, it's also magnesium as well, so uh, not much because you don't want to overdo it with it. Um, it's just a bit of a tonic, I suppose. Like I say, I uh, bought myself a new tool this year try out let's try and sort it out it's just basically one of these things you know it's, it's all right if your soil semi crumbly but if it's rock hard and clumped up it just it's hard work so uh i say these are the cauliflower see some of the leaves are a little bit yellow um that's just like i say it's just like a chlorosis type thing the, the middles will be okay give them another like two weeks and they should start to to really start putting some growth on because they'll have roots out in the ground. Same with the broccoli. Now, any time any of you get into that purple in the leaves or anything like that, it just means the plants are hungry. You know, and I didn't want to start to feed them in the pots and getting the pots too wet because I thought once I do that, I've got to keep them in a pot for a bit longer. You know, um, I thought, well, I just need them out of the way because they were just drying out and it doesn't no good keep drying out at home in the pots and that and going dry and then wet. So I thought I'll get them here where they kind of get some roots out and they've got a, a consistent sort of um, moisture to go at. Same with the garlic. When I came down the other day to have a look, one of these had been pulled out, so it was that one there. So I just shoved it back in. 
probably chickens, you know, because they've been on the plot, been chasing them off already. So I'm going to get on with them spuds. So I've got to six rows, or well, whatever, I mean, 90, 100 spuds, something like that, I don't know. Probably over 100, I guess. But uh, get them done, and then uh, if I get a chance, I'll get these peas in, because I've got my gutters with me. They have sort of, they've grown well, but, you know, they are in the um, compost I've been sort of questioning, but uh, they sort of like got to a certain size and kind of not grown anymore. So I'm hoping they're not stunted, but uh, that problem's ongoing. I'm not getting any help with it. So uh, we shall crack on and get some, uh, get these spuds in, and then that's one job that's done for this year, and then hopefully just a case of hilling and then dig them up and do okay. Right, so we shall crack on. I'm going to put these earth green shaft peas in now. Um, just brought them all over from the van. It's a bit of a nightmare because like two gates to go through, to be honest. So it's a, it's a bit of a, you know, faff, but they're over here now. Um, they're, they're fairly dense, you know, they're, they're, they're looking okay, but just have to see how they go. Um, so just basically hollow this out with like a, a rake head. I haven't made the same mistake as last year. I kind of banked it up on that side because otherwise, if it, you know, if we don't have any rain for a little while, it can dry out because uh, there's nothing sort of that side of it because that, that's going to end up hilling up the potatoes. We'll have a look at the spuds once I've got these in. Um, I've just sort of like about five, ten minutes ago put two watering cans across the whole lot. So I've got kind of four sort of five foot lengths of gutter. Um, the, these were sown, uh, I can't remember. In one of the videos, probably two or three weeks ago, something like that, I think. So I've cut the duct tape just off the one end. You don't have to duct tape it. I just find it a bit easy, you know, to stop it from falling out everywhere. Um, so hopefully, if it's um, had a good soaking enough, they should just slide out. It usually does, but uh, there's always a, the odd one that can be a bit stubborn. You know, cause really, you really do need to soak them to get them out. So the idea is, is... Uh, Kind of get them roughly where you want them. Like that. Don't be frightened of giving it a right good tip up, right? Give it a bit of a shunt. It should start coming out. You know, if there's plenty of roots in there, they'll hold them together. There's a few gaps in them, but uh, it's not like I did them in the five of a dice sort of sewing. Well, they'll thicken up. Well, I hope so, anyway. There's probably not quite enough to get all the way along here, but you know, they're probably about a foot short or something at the end, but I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, it's just a bit easier than um, dipping loads of holes out and putting little uh, single sort of plants in. And you can sort of tear the stuff apart and spread it out a bit more if you want. But, uh, I'm not going to bother. They go as far as they go and that's uh, good enough for me. There's one that's being stubborn, isn't there? The tape's closed off around the end of it. The thing with duct tape it, swing it around the other way. Should hopefully reverse it now. As they, as they sort of grow, you can sort of tie them in a little bit. And then I'm just going to, in case I need any more soil, I've got this uh, tub that I had left over in the garlic bed, but I'm just going to basically run my trail down this side here. That's up.
So it's about a foot, foot short at the end here, but you know, I could always sort of spread these out a little bit. Just hoping that things like pigeons and that leave them alone. Sometimes when I've done them on the uh, on the actual beds, I put a net over them, but I haven't got time tonight to be putting a net over. So I'm just going to get a rake and push a bit of soil from the other side and give them water. And if we forecast some rain, I like washing everything around it as well. So they're plenty wet enough to uh, keep them alive for a while anyway. You know, um, you will get some growing up both sides of the net. But, uh, I just thought, well, Nice big long row. And hopefully, yeah, uh, them first days will be near enough out for catching the last ones on the other side. It's just simply put your watering can on the right on it and give them a right good drinking. I'll all soak through tonight and then tomorrow when the sun comes up they'll all stand up hopefully and they shouldn't really need any more water providing we don't have a dry spell so uh, we'll have a look at these potatoes now all right i'll uh, try and keep camera as steady as i can and um, so managed to get um, quite a few in i think there's 124 potatoes i've got in all together we've got a row of uh, this row here is, there's 10 in these two rows. There's like 10 sarpol mirrors, and then in one there's five all, and the other one's six. I did space them out quite a lot, to be honest, them ones in uh, between the row, but these other ones have got like, you know, sort of 23, 24. And then we've got uh, Maris Pier, Charlotte's, Jazzies. They're a good potato, Jazzies. You know, if you do them in pots, Jazzies. Um, you get a good yield of small potatoes. You leave them in the ground, then you get them bigger as well. They like a Charlotte shape, you know, the sort of longish. And we've got the Duke of York. I grow Duke of York because they're the first day that do well as a roaster. You know, so you can roast them, chip them. They're a good all rounder, to be honest. Um, not the highest yielders, but I've probably done them near enough every year, bar from a year where I did Casablanca, which didn't do very well. So. So nothing else has been done today. Uh, oh, peas are in now. It's just sorting out regarding these onions. I've kind of pulled out the ones that seem to be sort of perking up and coming round and put them in the seed tray at home. So it's whether to, not to actually go for it and bring them down and put them in. I probably will do, you know, if I can get like 80 to sort of pull through or put them in. I've got the other ones that I've sown, so I'll just make space for them somewhere. So, on that note, the sun's been shining all day. So it's a bit like last year, to be honest. Um, it was nice early on in the year, but I mean, this year, April has been quite cold. And we had this, um, probably going back about five, six years ago, April, um, it, was, it was a cold April, and it, um, it did affect the growing season a bit. So we're just hoping we don't get like a, a load of rain, and a load more frost, otherwise you can start problems with potatoes and things like that, you know, rotting. But, uh, that's it from the allotment um, for now, until I come back and do some more, but there'll be an update from the garden. I say I've been planting out some lettuce and some spring greens and whatnot in the back garden, just to give you a bit of a, an update. And then uh, be sowing things like uh, cucumbers, beans, courgettes, all the sort of frost tender stuff, can, you can start sowing that now, and sweet corn. Um, none of that will be coming up here till sort of last week of May, first week of June, all the frost tender stuff. Uh, cucumbers will be back at home. Uh, also, I've got some stuff on comp a video on uh, different composts. Um, you know, just doing a bit of a comparison sort of thing. You know, I thought about I'll try this year. So take care. Thanks for watching, and uh, thanks for subscribing. And click the uh, the bell icon to get any no notifications. And I will see you next video. See you now. Bye bye.